nobody want the fame forever we strange but clever like two forces came together to change the weather you can blame whoever but what happens is just your destiny yes i'll be stressing letting the little things get the best of me lesson to be learned but i'm burning it through the recipe all right guys welcome back so it looks like we did get uh, stuff figured out on our end as well as far as the end game audio I do apologize for that uh it was actually i'll take blame for it it was an issue with on we had to restart it so <laughs> uh, but it should be good now, so everything should be good, guys. Don't worry. Uh, so, but it looks like game two is actually it just just started here, so we are ready once again. Trout, you good to go? I'm good. I'm good, Breaky. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into it then, with uh, no further delays here. So here we are, game number two between Q Squad 112 taking on Orange Esports Malaysia. Of course, Orange Esports up one game to nothing. As a result of that first game there, um, and again, it was it was definitely dominance on Orange Esports side. Uh, there was there was a little bit of hope there for Q Squad 112, but uh, at the trial at the, uh, trial at the bottom, to say the least, just really wasn't working out in their favor, and uh, kind of just uh, stone or snowballed from there. So, uh, but yeah, g allowing Orange Esports to get pebbles as well, that's definitely risky in itself. And so that's something where you could look at maybe uh, maybe the picking stage to go a little bit different here. If uh, QSQ 112 wants to actually win this time around, so I yeah, and I think what they needed to do on the uh, QSQ side anyway for the last game was they needed to be the aggressors in that lane, especially you know level one, level two, where Witch Slayer's stun is very very weak. Now, like I said, it's only a one second stun. It's a well, it's not even one second. Like I said, it's 0.5 in the air and then 0.5 down. Uh, it's just very very short in general. It does such little damage, and uh, you know Polly does have the grip. But at the same time, level one, Pebbles only has the, the stun or the chuck. He doesn't have both. He can't yeah. combo. So, uh, but, you know, the, the Glacius plus the Magnus plus the FA combination is so much stronger level one than what um, Orange Esports had. So I, need, I, I definitely think that they had to be more aggressive. And unfortunately, they weren't. Orange capitalized on that. Yeah, and so Orange Esports Malaysia, again, always a very entertaining team to watch. You were talking about so even before. The, you were definitely wanting to cast this uh, match uh, the, out of the four possible matches for today, and uh, in the end, I agreed with you. It's a very entertaining team to watch, and you get the chance. And so, um, and again, they showed that that first game. So, what does QSQ 112 have up their sleeve uh, to kind of counter that and uh, slow things down maybe a little bit going into game two? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, real quick note, by the way, uh, I want to give a shout out to the DreamHon viewing party. It's actually what it is. Xander Care, S2 Community Manager, he's putting that together uh, for all these matches throughout the group stages. Every single day, actually, when we're going to be casting on Honcast, you can actually join fellow Honcast viewers and uh, discuss the matches that are at hand uh, with Xander K and even pro players that are going to occasionally join. And you get ask, you get to answer questions and whatnot. I believe some prizes are, will even occasionally be given out. So uh, to do that. You actually go to channel Dream Han Space Party in uh, in the game. So as you can see right here on your screen, uh, have the Dream Han Space Party channel open. But anyway, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Uh, back to this game though, the locks have finished. We're now in the banning phase. So the blind bands though uh, were Magnus Aluna here by Q Squad and then Mage Bane Darkly, just like last game from Orange Esports. But Magnus Aluna has blind bands, Ralph. Yeah, that's really interesting, um, <clears throat> especially the fact that they played Magnus last game. Um, but I already know what they're going to do. I know in the second game when you're kind of frustrated and you lost the first game, uh, game quite, you know, quite badly, is you pick that hero that's kind of like your signature hero. And uh, right away we saw that in Locke, Ophelia. Mm -hmm. And I know Meisty is a very good Ophelia player, and he loves to play Ophelia. In fact, I think he has an account named Ophelia. <laughs> and uh, I, I would not, you know, be surprised if they do pick Ophelia. At the same time, though, uh, Orange Esports, I think, was it Orange? Lock Parasite. Yeah, it would be pretty silly to lock Ophelia, want to play it, and then yeah. lock Parasite as well. So, they, yeah, they locked Parasite, which is, you know, it's, it's not like a, it's definitely countered Ophelia. I wouldn't say it's a hard counter, because there's definitely ways to play against a Parasite when you're Ophelia. You just got to be very smart about it. You know, move your creep away and just auto attack the parasite and wait for him to get frustrated and leave. Yeah. Uh, so there's ways to deal with him, but it's, it's definitely annoying. I think a first pick Glacius here makes sense for Q Squad 112. It, cause, and especially if you're talking about Ophelia, and Glacius can be considered a, yep. a solid counter to Ophelia. So obviously, with him not being or making it to the banning phase, um, would be a solid choice here for Q Squad to go with first. But I might even say Polly, but yes, Glacius okay. would be very, very good as well. Yeah. I would not be surprised. Uh, if they're if they're trying to look, you know, toward a Ophelia pick, Glacius would be very yeah, very yeah. Again, off that logic, so 
Um, the, the bands that actually happened after the lock phase, we had Tundra, Moraxis, Jeraziah, Silhouette, Pebbles, and Plague Rider. So, um, yeah, nothing nothing too crazy. But, I mean, I guess the lock pool, you, you talked about Ophelia's. There we go, Wretched Hag, actually, hmm. the first pick. So, now this, this is going to leave Glacius and Polywalk Priest. I mean, yeah, that could be it for Orange. Too. So, um, yeah, very interesting. I guess, I guess uh, Q Squad 112 valuing Wretched Hag very highly here. With the options. And I'm not sure why, especially when Polly's on the board. They know Orange loves to run Polly. Um, you know, support or solo mid, doesn't matter. It's still a great counter against Wretched Hag with both with all those, you know, CC abilities. Uh, as well as, you know, you have to think about the late game, too. Is Wretched Hag's probably going to go for a normal stone. Whoa. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, sorry, there was like a bunch of sound coming through my headphones there. But, uh, you know, Polywalk has three different ways to disable a Null Stone, so it's very easy to counter Wretched Hag. Mm -hmm. But they do go with the Tempest pickup. That's a little interesting to me. Yeah, uh, again, it, it, especially with <laughs> the Keeper Parasite and Ophelia O being uh, locked here as possible jungle picks, if they wanted to go with any of those. But, yeah, feeling confident with the Tempest uh, pickup here is Orange U Sports Malaysia. So we'll see how they decide to use it. I want to say, though, Orange is actually also a team that we were talking a little bit about Wild Soul last game running him uh, long lane. Uh, I believe they've also ran Tempest. They're known for running Tempest a little bit in the lane, not necessarily jungling with him um, on top of that. So uh, I'm curious to see if uh, we see something like that from Orange, but how about that there from Q-Squad? Demented Shaman Balfagor. That is a deadly combination if you know how to use it correctly. And you would think picking up here in such an important match, uh, Q-Squad at least uh, knows what they're doing with that combination. But what do you think of those two picks? Um... Normally, I wouldn't really like them, but these are picks that you can kind of pull off in lockpick because, you know, you're on your third pick as orange. The, all, all the things are banned. After this pick, you're going to only have the lock pick or the lock pool to pick from. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can be like, okay, well, let's just get some counter pushers now. We'll be fine. Well, crap, there's only FA and maybe Nymphora or Bubbles in the pool that can do that. So um, it's a really smart strategy, and I, I like it by Q-Squad. Uh, at the same time, uh, Orange picks up Pestilence. Yeah. Don't know about that pickup. I know that Orange really loves to run Pestilence for some reason. Um, I mean, it is a strong hero. They I like love to Pestilence. use him. He is fun. He's good. His ultimate's very, very strong, but he's just not that effective against push lineups. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. And they also now go with the Keeper of the Forest, so that's an even stronger push. <laughs> I was going to say, that pretty much uh, puts it on the car. And yeah, Forsaken Archer to finish. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious what Q-Squad 112 has in mind here in terms of a strategy when it comes down to it. You got, you got Wretched Act, Forsaken Solos, Balfour, DS Land, and Keeper of the Forest, Jungle, of course. A mass push is the name of the game. But I mean, look at the Hellborn side. You, you talk about mass push. I mean, they definitely got some push potential over there themselves, but they also got they, they do got also a, a decent amount of uh, creep clearing potential, which is always a good thing when you're going up against uh, the lineup that QSQ112 has over there. So, but yeah, this is uh, the Pestilence you mentioned may, may not be the best pickup against a mass push lineup, so that could be uh, that that could be where things go wrong here for Orange Esports. But I do love seeing the uh, XSF flame Pestilence here, because as you're talking about, I mean, I, 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 I personally think it's I still remember back in the days where we saw that Soul Steeder and Drama to Pestilence combination so much uh, because of all the minus, mass minus armor, which is always entertaining. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I've always been a big fan of the Pestilence here, as I've stated before. So it's cool seeing him here, but I think you're right, though. That could be uh, the danger zone for Orange Esports. But, you know, it doesn't mean by any means that the game is uh, <laughs> in favor of Q Squad 112 now because obviously you still got to play it all out. So, uh, But the lanes now, where, where are they going to lane, lane these guys in? Um, how about this from the Legion team? So they're actually sending Balfagor middle here. Is that something you would expect? No, not at all. And I, I feel like they could just get... Uh, and what, what Orange Esports is doing is very, very obvious. I mean, when you have a Tempest and an Ophelia, or pretty much a Tempest and another jungler, that Tempest is 99% of the time going to go long lane. Yeah. And that's, that's what he's doing. And when you can do that to a hero that has a deny, like, say, a Plague Rider or a Tempest, you can punish them by just pushing that lane in and being like, you're going to deny? Okay, well, thanks for helping me. I'm going to push in your tower. And so it's very, it's much smarter to put, you know, that big pushing hero in the bottom. Although they do have a Forsaken Archer who, you know, has a lot of pushing power herself, so maybe they'll still look to push that lane. But Balfagor mid, I don't know. I, I haven't really seen it. I can't really judge it too quickly. Maybe it's something that's really strong. Um, so, yeah, I, I, 
I can't judge it too, <laughs> too much right now. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that. That's why I asked because it definitely caught me off guard too. And you would think, especially with DS Balfour, that they would uh, go to at least the short lane, if not the long lane. But going to be going mid here, and it is going to be the Balfour solo, the, or no? I guess Demented Chum. Eh, I don't know. Demented Chum switch up the lanes here. Yeah, they they already did the switch up. Wretched Dad came all the way bottom. Uh, Forsaken Archer heading top, but it is looks like it is going to be DS though. At least initially, <laughs> babysitting this Balfour, but no, maybe not actually. She is actually going to the top, so. What are they doing? I don't no. know. Yeah. Okay, rule number one if you're picking a tree, you cannot go dual lane long lane. It does not work. It especially doesn't work if you're having another jungler on the enemy team because now you're going to have a dual lane and a long lane against a tri lane that has no escapes. FA, um, FA Disham, it's going to get pummeled, and actually we're probably going to see a Bloodlust here right now on the Forsaken Archer. It is coming in, the Skeleton King, where's the trap? Not coming out just yet, there's that trap on Forsaken Archer. Heal Bomb going to come out from the Adventure Shaman, but of course only level 1 only has the Heal Bomb, and down goes FA. So you called it 100% there, Trout. Zero escape mechanism, they got a mini heal, but you know what is that going to do against all that burst and CC coming out here? Fun more G Sports. So y maybe you would you would hope that they learn the lesson right away and quickly adjust that once again, but it looks like they're committing to it. So yeah, that's gonna be a danger danger for the top lane for Q Squad 112. And I mean we see once again, here we go. Skeleton King coming back in. Where's the trap? There's the ice imprisonment. Where's the trap? There's the trap. In comes the impalement from Pestilence and down goes Forsaken Archer. So Wow. Uh, that's good. I haven't seen I haven't seen two you know consecutive kills on one hero like that in a long time, and already um, Ophelia using that command or sorry the judgment spell very uh, quickly on that uh, pestilence <laughs> you know getting its full effectiveness. He's like I don't want to waste region on you. Just go back to base and heal, and so that's what he does. He's probably going to pour it back in immediately. Buys the TP scroll and back to top lane. He goes why I just you guys got to uh, your team's got to think about these lanes and see what they're going to do. I, uh, it just seems very, uh, maybe, uh, the only thing I can think of is they thought Tempest was going to go short lane. Yeah. And that they were going to punish him. But even then, it's very easy when you have a jungle to switch it up. And even if Tempest is short lane, Ophelia could come back into the jungle and get some easy ganks. And the reason why this doesn't work is because you have a Keeper of the Forest who just is not aggressive at all. You cannot man up long lane and do like a pseudo try with tree. Because what's tree going to do? Run at you with his trees? Like, you just <laughs> run away. He has no ganky potential until he hits that level 6. That's yeah. why the only way to run any kind of team composition with a tree is to um, you know, be very pushing style in your short lane and throw a suicide top. And we're seeing right now you know, how it's just not working at all. Yeah, I'm on board with you. I definitely think Q Squad 112 is, is making a big, well, it's obvious. I mean, they've already made a big mistake here with this lane. And it's just, it, it, it's just one of those cases where it just seems so obvious. But for whatever reason, they're, they're not adjusting. I mean, they're, they're sticking to their guns. And this is, we've talked about this before. This is definitely that case of it, almost tunnel vision. I mean, you get to the point where it's like, oh, mm -hmm. wait, we've already committed to this. We just got to stick with it now. No, yeah. you don't. I mean, adjust. I mean, sure, it's, it's, but it's better late than never, as uh, the saying goes. So, but they're sick of I mean, we got a Forsaken Archer that's still level one. I mean, she had a hor Forsaken Archer had a horrible last time for Q Squad 112. And it's just going to be even worse this time, which is very hard to say, uh, considering how poorly she did last time. So I, I guess Q Squad 112 is simply putting their baskets into the fact that Balfagor, uh, at least I'm guessing, is doing okay in the middle lane. 18 and 2 compared to a 8 and 4, now 9 and 4 bubble. So yeah, it's safe to say he is uh, fairly comfortably winning that middle lane, there's my mm -hmm. And then the bottom lane, Hag 16 and 1 against a Tempest who's 15 and 5. So Hag's actually not doing too shabby. And of course, you got Keeper the Force in the jungle. So. Pretty much what this says to me is that they're putting all their eggs in one basket in terms of we're going to get this level 6s, level 7s, we're going to all group up and do some mass pushing here, and hopefully that works out because I don't see another strategy working at this rate here because of how this game started. So, Right. Yeah, uh, Balfacor is doing a good job here in the mid lane, um, beating the bubbles as far as CS goes. Bubbles almost has the chance to man up and kill this Balfacor, but uh, Balfacor eating those minions is going to help regurg or, you know, fill up some of that life of his. Uh, the rune is bottom, but they don't have vision of it. It is an illusion rune, so not the biggest deal. Um, you know, this bottom lane, I haven't really paid too close attention to it. Tempest is, as you said, 17 and 7, has some good denies there from his uh, his conversion spell, the elemental there. Uh, but Hag is getting the better end of the uh, creep scores. He has, he has 21 creep, so it's kind of even there, although Tempest is going to hit levels faster than Hag. Yeah, but I mean, I keep looking back at this Forsaken Archer. I mean, she is 12 and 1, so she... <laughs> 
She actually isn't doing horrible when it comes to Queen of Fire. She is getting some in there now, every now and then. They have been playing a lot more passive, and the lane's getting pushed up, which is obviously in their favor. But middle lane actually backward in a lot of trouble. In comes the amp damage. Actually, come, or actually that was a new coming out from Ophelia. Trying to stay alive with the minions. Going to block him a little bit. The last auto attack, though, coming out from Bubbles and gets the kill. So Balfour nearly had to escape, but there's the minions for you. He splits up. Is it going to be enough to get away? Doesn't know which one's the right one. There's a shell support at the last second. And Handle Baby on Bubbles barely escapes. So that's the power of the minions right there from Balfour. Even after death, they could definitely get some kills as we've seen in the past. But right there, Bubbles able to survive. So uh, that that's what we talked about, though, you know, how at least Balfour is having a dominating time in the middle lane. But now the gank on him, and all of a sudden he is slowed down. So things once again not starting off the greatest here for uh, Q Squad 112. And no doubt they are playing uh, an uphill battle here to start off this game now. Yeah, I mean, that was a good gank in mid. They did get the kill on the Balfour, but what I don't like is when you're winning um, a lane very handily, which Orange was doing in the top lane, and then it's kind of abandoned it. I'd like to see them just kind of sit on this FA and just punish him and punish the, uh, the Q Squad team for, you know, dual laning long lane. And they do have the ward up here, and maybe that's what's deterring them from ganks because this ward from uh, Kipitji, I don't know, I think that's how you say it, is, uh, you know, kind of scouting out any possible ganks. And, they should be really aware of that, and they did have a, a sentry down here um, to get rid of this pole ward. I don't know if they actually placed it, but they did put a sentry down there. Um, they should realize, though, that when they're trying to gank and they back away immediately, that they have some kind of vision. Um, so I would suggest in the future counter warding that earlier and then just sitting up top, getting Ophelia just massive levels in the jungle, and then ganking any time there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Oh, Balfour once again spawning the minions and uh, pressuring the tower now with it as well here in the middle lane. So six and a half minutes, and we do see a bit of uh, that pressure that we we're expecting. But even meanwhile, the top lane for a second. After speaking of pressure, in a lot of trouble right here. Demented Shaman throwing out the Superman's cape, and a will heal for second archer right there at the last second because of that final auto attack coming out from Glacius. So good support there from Demented Shaman at least that time around, and uh, able to keep Forsaken Archer alive despite the uh, duo right there. Now, obviously, Ophelia wasn't there, so definitely being a big difference. But speaking of Ophelia coming in the middle with the Catman Champion, nice kill field. Where's the Catman Champion nuke coming out? I don't even think it hit. Oh, it looks like it did hit, actually. And there's a nuke from Ophelia. Mycey barely stayed alive, though. And Balfour will left the hell on new with the take out the creep just to make sure. And he stays alive. And you also saw the turnaround kill happening onto Ophelia right there because of the root from Keeper of the Forest. So, again, excellent play by Mycey. Staying alive on Balfour. And at least coming out with an assist right there. When it's all said and done. So, Q Squad 112, things have slowed down since the very beginning of this game. And they, they honestly, you know, they're, they're, they're keeping their composure. So that's the good thing. And uh, this game is now actually looking a lot better in terms of it not going out of hand by any means for Orange Esports. So, confidence restored back in uh, Q Squad 112, I guess. Yeah, and I just, I, it goes back to, I don't know why they abandoned this top lane when they were crushing it uh, very easily. If this was a different hero, this is why, I, uh, it goes back to the drafting, really, and goes back to why I don't like Pestilence. Um, say if Pestilence was, say, like a, I know Silhouette was banned, I think. Mm -hmm. I know he was banned in the first game. But say Silhouette, or say Pestilence was like a Silhouette, and you give him these two, like, kills in the first two minutes uh, with his tri lane, you put him up against an FA, and D shot. I mean, she's going to hold her own and can probably get some more kills by herself. She was not banned, by the way. She was not banned. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I know she was banned the first game. That's why I said I wasn't quite sure. But, yeah, if Silhouette was up there. That would be so much better. Pretty much any, any ranged hero um, because you're going to have the level simply because you got the kills early on them uh, you know, in the game. And you're going to have the gold leads. That means you probably have your steam boots and they don't even have boots. I mean, FA had nothing at the time. All right. And... Uh, I just feel like that this is why I don't like the specialist pick. It is very strong in team fights because of that ultimate and you know the AOE stun and all that. But yeah. you know oh, they do have some grouping up here again, and that's exactly what they need to do. She was banned by that. I apologize. <laughs> There's a lot of text, so I did actually see it. So she ended up being banned on that note. But actually at the top, he's talking about grouping up once again. Demented Shaman actually dropping quickly. Ready to see the kill in the Wretched Hag actually happening. Demented Shaman will fall. And Forsaken Archer very likely going to get taken out. Good hero blocking coming out from Ophelia. Couple more auto attacks should do her in. In fact, the Impale going to come out. And the Congor ta on top of that, adding insult to injury. So as you mentioned mm -hmm. before, you know, wondering why they went away from the dominating top lane. Well, they come right back to it right after you talk about it. And sure enough, they pick up a, uh, well, two kills up there, and then, of course, Hag actually going down even at the bottom lane. Keeper the Forest actually taking a lot of damage to the tower here and nearly <laughs> dying himself, so needing to be careful. Uh, that lucky was, that no one was nearby. That was a solo kill uh, from the Tempest onto the Hag, even with Keeper there. I don't know if Keeper actually rooted. I don't think he did, 
but it looked like he was going to, you know, try to make something happen. But Shuyu, I think that's how you say it, got the kill on the hag. And that's just, that's just not good. Yeah. Shuyu is, a, by the way, my probably my favorite player on Orange. I really like the guy. Mm -hmm. He's really cool in real life. I remember playing mid wars in with him at the tournament, and he went something like 30 and zero with a Luna. I mean, he's a <laughs> He's a really good player and a uh, really fun guy to, to talk with. And uh, good job by him to get that solo kill on the hag. That, that's really good for his team. Yeah, that's uh, it's unfortunate. Again, I was watching the top action, obviously, but um, how did that happen? I mean, definitely have to check out the replay for that one because uh, you, you think about it, you put, do the math in your head. It's like, well, that shouldn't happen. But well played by Tempest. Demented Shaman, no chance at the top side. For some reason, got caught in the jungle there again. And the minions come in, Pestilence from the other side, and just nowhere to go. So uh, the pressure really being picked up here for the Hellborn team by Orange Esports Malaysia. Again, this is their signature game here. They turn it on, and it just does not stop. It goes full throttle. Good luck slowing it down. This top tower will fall. The middle tower taking pressure. Now, the bottom tower was taken out by Balfagor in the meantime. So we are having a little bit of uh, tower racing going on. As it's now two tower kills for the Legion team, and still a one that just happened for the Hellborn side. But again, the middle lane taking a little bit of pressure. Keeper the Force is nearby, has a route ready to go if they choose to defend. But Balfagor continuing to push the pawn him. So uh, both teams pretty uh, pretty solid and committing right here in terms of going full force. Balfagor seems to be winning this race so far, though. And uh, do they have invulnerability is the question, because if they do, expect it to be used and the port's coming in. But it doesn't look like it. And this tower is going to fall. So Balfagor doing work right here for the Legion team. All of a sudden, his GPM's 418 gold per minute, and he's going to keep going. Yeah, like, I, like he should. I mean, they're, they're pressuring both mid and top right here. So that was a really crucial uh, tower kill right there. Had that got denied, their efforts would have been pretty much completely futile. And then they get another kill in the tower mid. So that was definitely a good exchange for Orange Esports. Yeah, but Balfagor, I think he's maybe overstayed his welcome a little bit too much now. He does not have a homecoming solo, so that's a big thing. Um, oh, he's going to start walking back, though. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, Glacius actually is using the Glacial Downpour right there to clean up the creep wave as well as the Balfagor minions. And, uh, well, accomplishing it. So, hey, you know, he got the farm out of it, stopped the push from happening. So ultimates, as we say, are there to use. So. Um, I don't know if I would have used that <laughs> one at that time. I mean, that's, yeah. the Glacius Ultimate, is, since it's been improved, is just such a great team fight ultimate. Um, I mean, you know, maybe she's not going to get in a team fight, but it is a long cooldown. I mean, it's, what, 130 seconds? 150 seconds. Wow, that's yeah. really long. That's, almost, that's like 30 seconds less than Tempest Ultimate. Yeah. So, at level 3 anyway, but... Yeah, it's up there, so... Um, got the job done, it, though, it, it nonetheless. <laughs> he got the farm, and... You're going to buy more wards now as a result. So. Yeah. Uh, Hellborn team, they're running into the Legion side right there, but not a side really uh, committing to a fight as we saw. Now, we can start mentioning some items here. We're coming up to the 13-minute mark. Some some bigger and better items haven't picked up. Balfagor just upgraded big time. He went from Teacher and Hatchet to all of a sudden having Plated Greaves and Helm of the Black Legion as well. So he's off to a fantastic start. Souls Bulwark picked up by Keeper of the Forest. Always a very good item to have, especially in a push lineup. And other than that, uh, nothing standing out too crazy. But at the bottom lane, we do have some action coming out. Keep it the force getting caught right here. The uh, Unbreakable is going to be applied, though. Not going to matter, though. He ends up going down. Wretched Agua will fall as well. Demented Shaman going to need to get away. We see off to the side, Balfour doing what he can, but he just doesn't have enough. I mean, the minions are not spawned yet. He doesn't have enough charges. He's going to use the Hell on with the 80 plus charges. The Tempest Ultimate, even put, you can use right there on Forsaken Archer. But Pestless wound up falling. In comes back Wretched Agua after the buyback. And the Legion team trying to make a turnaround right now as Tempest also going to get caught once again by Balfour. Regurgitate in one second. Can he get it off right here? Yes, he can. The nice crippling ball they're going to be used. Pressing air. No, excuse me. Forsaken Archer, though, will go down right there as Bubbles off to the side. And look at Bubbles being patient. Handle Baby has a regen rune activated off to the side. He's going to go in and oh. snipe at Wretched Act, but he doesn't get the kill. Hack points away, and now Bubbles is going to very likely fall to the regurgitate. One more out of attack. There we go, coming out, and Bubbles goes down. Wretched Act stays alive, and now Ophelia is going to have to pour it out. She should be successful as we see right there. But again, Orange Esports, they looks like that could have been just such a dominating fight for them. But QSQ held it off in the end, and they push it back. Yeah, that was very, very close. It's such a crazy fight there. Wretched Hag did you know, use a buyback, so that's one you know very important thing to note, especially on a hero like Wretched Hag. If it was like a buyback on, say, Demanded Shaman or Tree, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But Hag, if this comes late game, that could play a factor. Um, that was a little bit of a greedy play by Bubbles there, trying to get that, that kill on Wretched Hag. Did have the ultimate from Pestilence on him, but at the same time, Bubbles did not have his song in a C ready. Uh, I think if you did the calculations in your head, it was, you know, pretty obviously was not going to get that kill with Wretched Hag being able to, you know, have 
to blink, you would suspect that Hag would have a level 3, if not maybe even a level 4, Flash of Darkness with a blink spell there to get yeah. away with low cooldown. So, kind of a greedy play there by Bubbles, but, um, you know, it, it was close, definitely, with that uh, Pestilence ulti as well. Also, Ophelia sent back Tempest there throughout that fight, um, but since the command, or sorry, I always call it command, but the judgment is only level 2, it took a just a little bit too much time. It was so close to sending him back to base, but uh, just not close enough. Mm. But yeah, something we did get to see that fight big time was the power of Hell on New Earth. And what I've always said is, it's, I, I think it's one of the most beautiful ultimates in the game as far as visually, just mm -hmm. awesome. But um, it, if you get those 80 plus charges, as we saw there with the minions being spawned, that it's a lot of damage, a lot of slow, and, and it hit, I think, nearly pretty much everyone in that fight too. So um, that, that no doubt did, uh, did a lot of the work there in that fight. And something to keep in mind as this game progresses, of course, that they're gonna have to deal with. And of course, he is level 11 here, so having the level 2 version now of the Hell on New Earth. But the pushing continues in favor of the Hellborn team, actually, as they're going to pressure this bottom lane. Once again, you do see the illusions being sent into the front lines. Do they have invulnerability? Yes, they do. Balfour spawns in, and they should be able to deny this tower now. It's just as barely in deny range. And, in fact, there we go. Unless Bubbles does something really risky, but that's an illusion, so never mind. So down goes the tower, but it is denied, so that's the good news for the Legion team. But a big fight of Bruin here at the bottom lane. Both teams have all five here. You've got Pestilence with the portal keys off to the side, trying to position himself, but it doesn't look like he's too comfortable, and he's going to end up falling back as the rest of his team was in the lane. So uh, Balfagor going to continue to commit, though, to a little bit of a push with his team uh, backing him up just behind him. So... Uh, looks like our Legion side now for the first time this game actually seems like they're going to all get together and make a full force push. So uh, happening at the 16 and a half minutes, but it is happening. And they're going to go for the lane where the two outer towers are destroyed. And they're going to go for the base push right here. So what do you think of this decision by QSQ? Um, I think it's a little early to be honest. I, I mean, they have a ton of push. They have FA, but it's so risky. I mean, you just see that bubbles nuke right there. It takes out yeah. like a third of or like a fourth of uh, FA's life. You know, the Desham heal helps him a little bit, but um, Pestilence blinking in there just to get the ultimate off onto Balfagor. Don't know if I want to go on the Balfagor. That's really not the smartest decision, but uh, yeah, I, I think this push is just a little bit too early, and I think they're going to, you know, back up eventually. They're just they're just too low level to really do anything about it right now. I think FA at least has to be level 11 as well as Hag. Yeah. You know, you do have a lot of farm on Balfagor. Actually, some initiation coming out from Pestilence, and I'll let you go ahead and take Rest this over. Hag, drop in right there, burst it like she's nothing. Keeper of the Forest trying to get away. He uses the root right there, but the team is just not ready to support. But this is what we talk about all the time, and I like the decision there from QSQ. Instead of just trying to save their teammates, instead of getting involved into a fight where they just weren't, it wasn't going to happen, they just run away. They poured away now. However, it looks like Pubbles may catch Balfagor here, but I don't think that's going to really do much. It just kind of tag each other, and Balfagor just runs away. So... In the end, it, could, it wasn't as disastrous as it could have been, but still, Orange Esports, they got a couple of picks, and uh, they forced QSQ to fall back. So whether they were looking to commit to a push right there, as you said, it probably was a little bit too early. We saw right there, maybe it was a little bit too early, and uh, it just didn't work out. But the positioning, definitely not uh, the, the greatest from Q Squad 112, as we saw there in that, uh, in that little bit of a skirmish. Coming up. But on that note, by the way, you mentioned Pestilence using the Swarm on a Balfagor. Something to keep in mind, of course, is not only does it give you vision of around him, so it's a, it's a good scouting tool, but on top of that, it does allow you to see invisible. So it, I think may, maybe that has something to do with it, too, where in case Keeper of the Force was going to use invisible on him to maybe push up a little bit, uh, he wasn't able to do that. So right, some tactics, a little bit of tactics there to keep in mind as a result of that Swarm going out, and just because they won't be targeting him still. Having its effectiveness. Balfour once again taking the swarm right here, but everyone is up, so another five versus five possibility gonna be coming up right here. Uh, crippling Volley gonna be used. A tower easily destroyed though. Not much to get it done. There's a oh, great wow. job from Pestilence. There comes Bottles on the ball. Where's Tempest now? That's the big question. He is not gonna be coming. The hell on it was coming out. The 80 plus charges and the Legion team looking to turn this around. Pestilence will end up falling in the front lines for a second after staying alive. Bubbles trying to do his work in the background, but now he's going to have to force a retreat. And Balfagor once again doing work right there. Wretched Act did get picked off. Now there was a pause. Uh-oh. Was it Tempest that crashed? It, it, who crashed? Because, uh, okay, so Tempest did ultimate. I actually missed that. Yeah, it I didn't catch really. It, right away. it didn't really catch anybody. I think it might have caught one person for a second, but then um, Balfagor silenced him immediately. So it was yeah. a very, very poor ultimate by Tempest there. I, I think he just kind of forced it a little bit too... That might have been why. I mean, there was some yeah. lag issues there. That's that's just too bad. Yeah. Yeah, so i uh, shoot you right there, as you see. Timing out, so that's that's unfortunate, but uh, that's obviously nothing, nothing anyone else can do. It's not, not like it's QSQ's fault by any means. 
Right. Um, it's just uh, technical issues. They happen. But I, I, as I said before, though, I mean, Demented Shaman, by the way, he did he did some work right there, keeping Forsaken Archer alive. But Balfagor, man, I mean, that hell on New Earth doing work. And as soon as that goes off, it seems like things start turning around. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just such, so much damage, and that's too bad about that disconnect there from Tempest because she's such a great player, and I think he could have done, you know, much better in that team fight had he been all there. Right, yeah, Bubbles on. should be able to get away here. Uh, he does have a portal, in fact, wow, <laughs> right away. As soon as the pause ends, he ports away. He did Homecoming Snow, but he actually canceled it immediately. Yeah. Um, so he's just going to have to run away, but it doesn't matter in the end. Um, he'll be fine. Balfour chasing, but obviously uh, the retreat already happening. And uh, there should be no more deaths, at least from that fight coming out. So, well, you said, I mean, disconnect, unfortunate for the Hellborn team. And maybe that uh, made it made a difference. But at the same time, Legion side, they fought off pretty well. And uh, they do hold it off nonetheless. So, but at, <laughs> they did lose their tower. So it's not like it was completely lost fight there for NG Sports. Right. Uh, they got the tower kill. What was that? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, Um. that was definitely a great trade for Orange. They got the kill on Hag. Uh, it did trade for Pestilence, but um, I believe Pestilence died second. No, he did die first, so it was a one for one trade, but they did get the tower as well, so they definitely won that fight. Um, Glacius just pissed up a puzzle box. Never seen that before. Whoa. But hey, cool. <laughs> if you could buy it, that's great. It's just going to add even more to your so pushing power. About that glacial downpour earlier. <laughs> Farming. <laughs> Mr. Ghost, man. I'm, see, I saw he had yeah. a Neophytes book. I meant to mention it, but I figure, you know, if anything, a tablet book. of command. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, we see a puzzle box picked up. But, oh, Keeper, the force getting cut out right here. That's the portal key power, especially on Pestilence coming out, and especially on a hero like Keeper, because with that swarm, you know, he's not getting away. So, But on that note, too, obviously, puzzle box, it makes sense. Against the Keeper, the force team, it's actually a very powerful item uh, to That's have in great. general for the, uh, for the level three purpose as well as mana burn and, you know, just the use of a puzzle box. I mean, in, in general, just actually is just a very good tool to have, especially if you get on a hero like Glacius. So, um, yep. yeah, that's good and for them and pushing the tower once again. And should you on Tempest picking up that barrier idol, it's just going to add so much pushing power. I mean, that is the key ingredient, like I talked about earlier, into pushing, you know, for the teams to push into the base. Yes, it's very easy to get every outer tower, but to actually push into the base, you really have to have a barrier idol, especially early on in the game. Later on in the game, it's more about picking off that key hero and then pushing, but right now with that barrier idol, especially with the puzzle box on top of that, you know, you get that puzzle box level 3 with the barrier idol pops on all of those creeps. Oh, that's like going to be a free tower for them. Yeah. Alright, so things, uh, again, this has been a pretty chaotic game, not surprising by any means, but I will say that's a sixth tower kill coming out for a Hellborn side in Orange Esports, and there's only three tower kills mm -hmm. by Q Squad, and I I feel like that shouldn't be the case. I mean, <laughs> with their lineup now 21 and a half minutes in, still fairly early on, we're starting to enter that mid-game stage. But I mean, look at the top lane. The tower's been pressure, but they still have an initial tower. And at this point in time, with the lineup that they have, you'd think that that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. So, uh, I don't know. It, you know, we talked about that a little bit, too, when they were pushing the bottom lane. Oh, maybe it was a little bit too early. And maybe they should invest into pushing at least the other lanes, at least the initial towers, if not even the secondary towers. Uh, both getting the gold out of that, you know, helping out as far as resources go for their side, as well as preventing places for them to port to for the Hellborn team. So um, we'll see if that comes into mind. But another note to make as well is Forsaken Archer, Juice Produce here, has been kind of quiet for Q Squad 112 as well. But it's been a good quiet because, honestly, she's at <laughs> 272 gold per minute now. And it's actually been, uh, it's much better than the last game, of course. And a great recovery after what was just a horrendous start as we kept going back to at the beginning of this game. But she does have a mighty blade. And, you know, I, I'm sure you would agree that kind of hope that it is going to be a shrunken head pickup right. uh, with that. But Conger being attempted in the meantime, and it looks like it's going to happen here. Yeah, definitely. Pestilence applying that, uh, that swarm on him <laughs> just for fun, I guess. Or it could be used for a null stone purposes, yeah. but never mind. It was already taken off. But they do get the Congor. That's going to be huge, you know, hellborn, as we say. Um, but that's also, you know, another thing.